All right, guys, so today we're going crappie fishing. Uh, we've been catching not a whole lot lately. Let's go, let's go make the most of it. We have nice weather today, a little bit of rain, but uh, very spring-like condition, so let's go catch some fish. Got these guys again. I'm gonna start with the live shiners, though. I got some, some floats rigged up. This is as simple as it's gonna get today. It's quiet, 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 real quiet. No pike, no crappies, nothing. Pike? That's gotta be a pike. Oh, we got a crappie. On the meat. Slow start, but it's the right start. Damn, look at that slab. Sticking out a couple slabs. S slow pick, but look at that. On that meat right there, man. That's a slab crappie, man. Solid 14 incher. 13 and a half. It's a good one. Let's harvest this guy. Grab a couple more. That means life. That's good. That's pretty good. That's that's good right there. Saltwater guys, this is like the equivalent of a corgi or black sea bass, something like that. That's what I would say. If you wanted to say what is the exact equivalent, I'd give it right right around that range. Cold, cold, cold. Pretty rigging and I hooked up again. I don't know if there's a stump or what's here, but it's obviously the meat. The meat is right there. This one's a little smaller too. Another crappie. That's what we're gonna harvest. Pick it away. It's a pick, it's a pick. It's freaking cold, man. Man, 40, I think it's air temperature, like 39. Alright, that's going to be the last one. Got slabs, man. Look at that. Fourteen and a half. It's a big crappie, man. Full of eggs too. All right. I'm actually gonna put this one back. That's freaking huge, man. This one's gonna spawn out. Let me let let this one go. I suck, man. I really do. Suck it down, man. Ooh. All right. I'm gonna keep one more. See if Mario's around, you know? If Mario's around, I do want to get him a couple. Slabs for days. Slabs for days. All right, that's good. We got four. Uh, that's good sized ones too. Not too small. I put back those real big ones. And this combo right here, 
Uh, that's a dark matter rod. You've been seeing me fish with this for a little while now. A lot of the Florida videos. Uh, nice little inshore rod. This type of fishing too. Uh, available from JNH.com. Like real nice uh, intro rod. It's a new Stratic actually I picked up. 3000 Stratic, 15 pound braid on it. Uh, pairs nicely. I haven't owned a Stratic in a long time. Um, I remember they used to own the white ones. I don't know, those are old school ones. Had a couple of those uh, maybe five, six years back. Uh, it's a really smooth reel. It's almost like the, it's like the status quo reel. What do you expect out of a good quality $200 reel? All right, uh, let's see what else we can find here. I'm just kind of soaking in the sun right now. <laughs> it's cold, man. It's been like a, this spring has been brutally cold. Really don't want to catch any more crap. We really want to get some pike going. Let's see what we find in here. Something messing with it. That's a pike, 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 pike. Oh man, what is that? That's not a catfish. Oh, green bass. That's a green bass right there. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a green bass right there. But uh, definitely decent fish. Guessing around three four pounds. I don't know. This is a bass without stripes. I know very little about them. Well, no surprise there. Uh, weather's taking a dump on me pretty quick, man. More, more lousy spring weather. Uh, yeah, that's uh. If that was summertime. I'd be way out of here. I'd be running to the hills. Uh, still not good. Yeah, I feel that wind too, man. It's like stiff west cold west wind right now uh yeah all right probably packing it in let me uh pull out my phone and see what's going on load up the radar i have a feeling we're gonna get hit with it i'm gonna get hit with the system right now all right guys i just got in the car um so continuity's a little screwed up this crappie's been sitting on, on ice well packed on ice on the cooler for uh, a day or two now we're gonna go see mario today is Thursday, I'm probably packing up and leaving. To, I mean, I'm packed up. I'm probably hitting the road Saturday night. Um, and that's it. So Mario, final meeting with Mario. Uh, what else is the, uh, things have warmed up. So you see me complaining about cold in this video a lot. Uh, this was probably the last really cold day and then things got nice, like today. Shh, don't tell anyone. I just found the biggest saltwater fishing stereotype in Mario's tackle box right here. The bells. See, that's not fair. I'm going to get the guy some nice homemade wine out of the vat, and he's going through my stuff. <laughs> All right, so he's making fun of my bells. There you go. He's making fun of my bells. Do you have a whistle in here too? No, no whistle, just the glow in the dark sticks. He's making fun of it. I kind of like the bells because at night when you're fishing, it's like Christmas. The Santa Claus is coming when that when you got that hit. But that's uh, it's been a while. That's, that's that's the old. Look how old they are. You see I know. They are? Yeah, that's when I first started doing bait fishing at night. But you know what the, the you know what the bad thing is. I'm hard of hearing, so I don't even hear these things. <laughs> so I had to put a glow stick, so I see the glow stick move. <laughs> oh man, that's great. All right, man. What do we got here, Eli? There's the hole. Nice. Nice one, look at that. Slabs. Slabs. Slab crappies. You ever had these before? I actually have. We, um, we were ice fishing with the club. Okay. And we grabbed a bunch of them and I we filleted them out and did them a bunch of different ways. But today we're going to do something simple that anybody can do. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to, to scale a fish. You know, there's those old school scales that look like a giant saw. Um, That's what I have. And then there's the, um, there's this thing here, which I didn't, this thing here, which I really didn't think was gonna work. I got it for Christmas from Anne Marie. So, 
it actually works really well. That's the magic scaler. The magic scaler. No sharp edges at all. You know what, what I also like to do too when you scale is to cut all the fins off. We're going to be grilling this. So mm -hmm. when you're with an open flame, you don't want to have these fins and this fin and Sticking this up. fin, you know, the dorsal pect uh, pectoral and um, I guess, what is this? The uh, casual? I don't know. Yeah, the back fin. Um, you don't want these will get leaves will get lit up and burn okay. and, and they'll, they'll cause problems when you're cooking. So I trim this off, this off, this off. I leave this. This is fine. Um, you know, for the presentation, you know, of course, we're going to cut the gills out. We're going to cut these nice and then um, we're going to stuff them. We have a little plethora of herbs here. We're going to do herb stuffed. Um, that's going to give a nice perfume inside of the fish. I like, and, uh, I like the sound of this. Be, it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna be really tasty. And you can make it at home. And you can also take this same recipe and do it in your oven. Right. So if you don't have access to a backyard, you can do it in the oven. It's really, and it comes really nice. And then, um, but we'll go more into that. We're gonna, so that's one way to clean it. All right, let me take these scales off. Now, if you are not uh, all bougie and have uh, one of these fancy magic scalers, what you can do, see we're going to cut that off, all right? Well, that gill wasn't supposed to be part of the deal, but so we can just cut that right along the line. That's it. So now if you don't have a magic scaler and, you know, say someone just bought you fish and you really never made fish before, so you don't have any kind of scaling tool. One of the one of the ways I like to go is with is actually a spoon. The th a thin one is the best, and it doesn't make the scales fly all over the place. You just kind of get in there and you work it under the scales. Really? They, no scales flying anywhere. They unlike just, a knife. Yeah, unlike a knife. You know, when you get the knife, you're like flicking them off. This actually gets under and breaks them free. Mm -hmm. and don't forget when you you know when you're scaling, do not cut the fish first. Gut it after you've finished scaling. Oh. See how nice and easy that is? Piece of cake. Yeah, but, and it's just a simple spoon, so you don't need those fancy gadgets. I'm really like, I get really OCD about taking scales off. No, it's the worst when you're. You, you see that? Like, because, like, I want to get every single scale because when it's I bite worst. into that fish. You don't ever want to. I don't want to bite into one of those scales. That's. That's the worst. It is. You know, it's one of those things. Typical, uh. Gutting technique. Take the knife, rip it right up here. Not stabbing myself. And we're gonna rip this right up through the breast, I guess. That's not going through, so we'll take a scissor. We're just gonna cut that right in now. Okay, now at this point, I like to cut the gills. Right now, all this is all this is loose now. And there goes the bile in the stomach. And now we just pull out everything else from the other end. A lot of fat on this thing. Okay. Now we want that cavity intact, so we don't want to cut all the way through here. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this is going to be like a little pocket. We're going to put some skewers in there, close it up. And that's it, now your crap is ready. All the fins are gone. You get this cavity here, we're gonna stuff, this is gonna be all filled with herbs. And when we're grilling this, those herbs are gonna steam, and that steam is gonna bring the perfume of those herbs into the fish. It's really tasty. It's one of my favorite simple ways to grill a fish. Anytime we're gonna do a fish haul, I'm gonna just rewatch this video. That's all I know I'm gonna do. And it's always there for you to watch. <laughs> you know, freshen up a little bit. I do that when I wanna learn my techniques. My cadence. Cadence. <laughs> oh, this is a female. Look at the fish roll. Oh, damn. We're going to grill that up for you, Eli. Mm. We're going to eat that. Mm. We've got a couple of kebabs going there. Very strategically placed <laughs> uh, mushrooms, shallots, and sweet bell peppers. But the little mini ones. <laughs> that you get at the uh, crudite bar. We're just going to put that on there before we put the fish, because this takes a little bit longer to cook, especially the onions. Right, so we got that on there. 
So this is what we're going to do. I got scales stuck on my hand. I got them stuck on my face. So what we always do is we always cut these little slashes right across the fish. And that does two things. One, it helps the, the, the thick part cut, uh, cook evenly. And also when you're eating it, you can you know pull the part easier. And these little grooves, all the herbs and stuff that we're going to put on the outside, they get they penetrate into the into the fish. So we're just going to cut these just just a little bit. Don't cut all the way through the bone. You know I like to put four hash marks in there, just going to kind of get this whole thing nice and even. Because don't forget this belly, there's no meat in here. It's thin, so mm -hmm. this is going to cook really fast. When you put these here, it kind of evens, evens up the cooking time. And that's really the best way, that's really the best thing you want to do. You want everything to cook evenly. You don't want overcooked fish with undercooked fish. We're going to really, I mean, we're going to stuff this cavity. Look, look we're going to use a lot of these herbs. This is, this is fresh thyme. Mm hmm Okay? This is fresh rosemary. See, now you'd say, oh my God, these are, you know, that, I know I use that for lamb all the time. Why do you do, you know, most people don't use it for fish. With this recipe, it works really well. I like to take a little bit of parsley also. All right, and you just kind of bunch that up and stuff it right in the cavity. I don't know, this is going to be a magic trick right here. Yeah, this is going to be a magic trick. Watch this. We're going to stuff it up and in through the throat. A man, right yeah. there. You want to see? It? You want to see herbs disappear? All right, you got to st stuff that right in there. Right. Now you see how they shine? See yep. how they went right through? No, I just no, my my senses are overwhelmed with all these fragrances. Yeah, isn't that smell you, beautiful? It smells great. I, I love that smell. You're breaking all the stems up. I'm just like, it's like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Wait until wait until you smell this fish when it's cooking. So now what we're going to do, also we're going to take a couple pieces of garlic because Italians just don't know how to cook without garlic. <laughs> I can't make anything without it except dessert maybe. So we're going to put a couple of cloves of garlic in there. You know, this is all, you know, you kind of try to slip it in between the herbs and the skin. Because you want that, you want that, to, you want it to cook with the heat. It's not buried in there. Then I like to take a piece of lemon and kind of Shove that in there too. And we'll have it on this side. I, I stuffed this cavity a little bit tighter than I expected. So put that lemon in there. I, I, and then uh, that. So now uh, over here, I'd like to put one clove and one lemon. Right? And, and one bourbon and one beer. So you put that right in there. And that's it. That's, that's, that's the fish and stuff. Um, now we're going to take a skewer, after I wipe my hands, most flexible one, and you kind of thread it. Stick it at an angle, okay? Flip through. And you stick it again. And one more. And, and that's it. You, you, you know, if, you, if you really need to tie this down, you can put a string around this. These, these you don't. The, the belly is kind of up and inside the fish, the cavity, and the cut is, is not the full length of it, so it'll hold itself. Next thing that we're going to do, um, we're going to season it. I, we're going to go with just a, a very simple, just salt and black pepper. Now, one thing, when you're grilling, never, ever do. Do not oil anything before you put it on the grill. Biggest mistake you make, the really? oil drips, and it just makes a flare up. You oil everything after you grill. You, when, I put the skew, when I put those skewers on, there's no oil on them. Everything afterwards. That's, that's interesting. I've seen a lot of people. They do that and everything catches fire. You know, so especially with the whole fish, I've seen people coated heavily in oil in a lot of videos, the whole porky cooking videos I used to see, and uh, it's interesting. Yeah, if you're doing it in the oven, absolutely. In the oven, it's not a problem. Um, if you take this same recipe um, and you put it in the oven, you can put oil on it. It's not a problem. Put it on a rack so the fish, you know, cooks all the way around. And that's the, you know, and that's, that'll work. I like to salt the skin really good. I, I'm a skinny dog. I like the skin of the fish. So we're going to make this crispy. 
and nice. I mean, if you want to jazz it up a little bit too, you can even put um, garlic powder on here, uh, onion powder, and kind of dress up the skin a little bit. We're going to keep it simple because what we're going to do is that after this is cooked, this here is California virgin olive oil, right? We, the Italian olive oil is very good, but we are making some great olive oil here in the U.S. It's half the price, and you don't have to worry about possible counterfeiting things going on and all that stuff, and, and this is beautiful stuff. So what I did in here, I grated about, a, about an inch of ginger, it was about three cloves of garlic, and about five sprigs of cilantro. So, and then I squeezed a half, uh, I squeezed a whole lemon in here. So we're gonna brush this with that after it's cooked. We're gonna put a nice little coating over it, let it sink in. Beautiful. Okay. So, I know a few people are gonna say to me, but Mario, I don't, if we don't put oil on the fish, how, I mean, how is it not gonna stick to the grill? Because it's the skin, it's gonna stick to the grill. Two things. One, oil the grill. Your grill should be seasoned. You treat it just like you treat a cast iron firing pan. Heat it up until it's really hot. Clean it off with a brush. Rub it with, rub it, or even spray it. You know, you get the spray oils to spray it with the flames off. Do not spray it with the flames on. Turn the turn the barbecue off. Spray everything. Let it. Close it and let it uh, season itself, and that's it. Now, before before you throw the fish in, what you do also is you grab a rag. I like to use grapeseed oil because it has a higher smoke point, but, oh, there's a rubber band on here. Um, you just take a rag or paper towel and you, you rub the grill with a little bit of olive oil, or grapeseed oil in this case. Okay, you rub it around, get that going. And that's going to help stop the, the stop from having the fish stick. Now, since the grill is nice and hot, you're going to put that fish down right in there. And the same thing, that little trick I taught you, yep. shake the fish a little bit when you get that down. And that'll help it stop from sticking. I'm going to put that one the other way. The same thing, just let it, let it go like that. Okay? Now, we have our kebabs here. They're nice and ready. Good char on those. We're gonna leave them on the side here. It can keep them warm. This side of the grill is off. That's it. Now we're gonna roast away. Boom. Should take about with a high flame. Actually, I gotta turn this flame up. Um, with a high flame, you're looking at uh, getting these uh, probably about five or ten minutes on either side. We're gonna put a temperature gauge on it. We're gonna pull the fish at 145, and that should be when it's done. It'll be, and that will it'll be succulent it'll be it won't be dry it'll be kind of medium to medium well by the time you're ready to eat it all right so before anybody starts saying something mm -hmm. this side of the grill is off I'm not putting this on top of the fire and this is not breaking the rule that I gave you before about not oiling the fish or not oiling anything on the grill. This this side is off. We're leaving it here because it'll kind of the heat from the the heat from the other side is uh, making everything cook a little bit more. The fish is doing really well. I wish you guys back in YouTube land could smell this. <laughs> it smells fantastic. It smells like I, I don't know. It smells like fall and Christmas and all kinds of good things. This is going to be divine. I know this. Yeah. So now in here is just uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and I put a little garlic powder in here to kind of kick up the mushrooms. So what other fish would you do this? Any white flesh fish in general? I, 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 this is my go-to. This is my go-to for whole fish. Porgies. In fact, that looks like porgy right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I do porgies like this. Um, I've done um, any type of fish that is, you know, like 14 inches or so, 16, 18. Um, I've never done a black fish like this though, but I would. Mm -hmm. Um, I do sea bass like that when you know the smaller sea bass any any smaller fish gotcha. even bluefish I've done bluefish like this mm -hmm. you do cocktail blues like this like the little ones I, you know d bigger than snappers but small cocktails right and it's just great it, it's just a, it's a great simple fast uh, recipe that brings out the flavor of the fish if you like the way fish taste do it like this because yep. this is this is what fish is going to taste like this is probably that's, that's there right there with that. 
Damn. That's it. That looks great. Little, little uh, skin. Yeah, that always happens it though. Always happens Seems like, that. Like, like a little bit always ends up melting off. Uh, this has a very um, soft skin also. It's not like a thick skin. So. Oh, okay. Like, like sea bass, black sea bass. That, that also always ha it seems like any time I've ever cooked black sea bass, all you lose a little bit of the skin. Well, I'm actually going to throw, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this very lightly so that it doesn't drip down, but we can get the fish a little bit wet from mm -hmm. it. This looks great, man. It really does. This is the cilantro, ginger, garlic, and olive oil. And a little bit of salt. So I'm just dabbing this on nice and lightly so it doesn't drip and give us any flare ups. Bloodline there. Here. The thermometer's key. I gotta get my, my side. Yeah, you have to have an instant read thermometer. This is a thermal pen. They, they make some of the best ones. Um, that's reading at 129. That's right on the spine. And that's where you want to look because that's where that little blood is going to be when you go. <coughs> this one is actually probably done. And this is a smaller fish. Pretty that is. I'm gonna rewatch this video about a hundred times. Of everything uh, in terms of the cooking ones we've done, this is the one where I've learned the most principles. So that's what's important. I learned the most. Well, you know, I kind of thought about it. It's, you know, there's a little bit of technique. I wanted to be a little heavy on the technique this trip. You know, since we're doing something easy. But there's technique. There is technique. There's mistakes like the oiling and the. Uh, yeah, I mean, I put the oil on heavy this time now because it didn't matter. Yeah. I mean, look at that, the steam is, that, that's, that's all the smell, the aroma of those herbs is permeating the meat, just like going in there. The garnishing, you know. a oh, lot, there's a lot, lot I learned here. It smells so amazing. I, 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 can you see that, can you see that, that smoke coming out of there, that, that, that steam? That's heaven right there. <laughs> this one's like a little bit bigger, so she's temping out okay, we're around 47, so that's good. I'll take that foil off of there. Bam. Yeah, is, look at that. Look how big that is, right? It's hot as hell, too. Let's show that on the camera. That's ridiculous, man. That is the, the most divine looking crappie I've ever seen. Look at that, man. And then we got this here. Alright, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna cut the lemon and uh and, and, and Eli, I got a gift for you. Oh boy. I got a gift for you. Let's see what this is. Eli, you're leaving, and you know what I said to you? Italian custom, when you move into a new home, you need a box of salt in the cabinet to scare away the gnomes. So, Eli, this here is your box of salt for your new home. <laughs> this will be the first thing that goes in my, my cupboard. You have to put it in your cupboard first, because you got to scare out all the evil spirits. <laughs> here we go, man. I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. You're welcome. <laughs> That's great. It's the, it's the small things like this that count. It's like these, these are the yes, yeah, witchcraft and sorcery. Those are the things that count. When I move out of uh, North Carolina, wherever, into a different home at some point in my life, I'm gonna find this in the back of somewhere. Oh, obscure. you can't use it. You're not allowed to use it. <laughs> this obscure salt's gonna pop up, and I'm gonna be like, oh, there it is. There you go. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring this up. Eli, am I gonna have to show you how to? I'm gonna, I want to see how you're gonna how you, we're gonna dig into this. We're just gonna okay. We're gonna dig into yes, this. Well. I kind of eat like a servant. Like sometimes, what I'll do, there's two things that you want to do. Um, you have that. You want to cut along. You get your fork and you get your knife and you you break along where the fins are, and you can just pick that up and pull that up in a way. So I'm like kind okay. of flying it down there. Yeah, you just loosen it up so you don't get those in there, Wait, and then so and then you can pick at it. Oh, those bones that, uh, yeah, you want to, you know, because what'll happen if you don't do that? Mm -hmm. As you're eating, it'll end up picking up those bones because that skin is all cooked right there. Got mm. one bone. But this is good. Look how juicy it is. See, this is the thing. When you do it at like 145, the fish stays juicy. A lot of people don't like fish because usually it's dry. You know, this nice is and perfect. Moist. This is so good. 
good. This is so good. effing good. This is, yeah. Skin is crispy. It's not burnt from the oil flare ups. This fish is so mild though. It is so sweet and neutral. It doesn't have any fishy taste to it at all. The, the herbs. Oh. It, it's it's re actually very sweet too, also. Um, sea bass fish. It's a little, yeah. the texture is different than sea bass. This is how you, this is now, I've learned this one is, I'm always, a lot of people, including myself, are iffy on preparing whole fish. Fried whole fish is easy, I've done that, that's no problem, it's like the easiest thing mm. to do, just flour and boom, go to town. Grilling, like sometimes it's hit or miss. Some some fish are more forgiving, like porridge, it tends to be more forgiving, mm. I find. They, taste, they tend to do better overcooked. This fish you wouldn't want, uh, if this no. fish got warmer, it'd get dry. Yeah, it would. It would. Yeah. It would totally go right into being dry. Yeah. Um, it, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't taste good. It would be. It would be like eating a piece of cardboard. Yeah, I feel Absolutely. like some fish are a little more forgiving on the overcooking, especially the more oily. Mm -hmm. A little more oily it doesn't. In fact, if they're oily, you want to have it cooked a little bit more. Yeah. You want to get that. Because everyone break says, oil you know, there's like a blanket for fish. You know, like it seems like certain fish are, you know, you want to hit right at, as soon as that hits the right temperature, you want to stop. And so, yeah, the more oil, the better. That was great. All right, we're going to keep eating. Um, thanks again to Mario, as always. Awesome. Just, to, yeah, all these videos we did in the last six months uh, doing that have been awesome. Um, a, he likes doing this. He likes I, I, I'm I not, like, forcing him. He likes I, ha I have a lot of fun <laughs> doing this. I'm going to miss this guy. I really am. Um, so I'm going to try to get down to uh, North Carolina as much as possible. I may even move there. I may even move there. So you'll see me in my retirement doing catch and cook with Eli. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. Uh, check out his restaurant in Park Slope. Anybody who lives in the New York City area, I have uh, information about that in the description. Um, and I think that's about it. If you like the video, we'll catch up with you soon. Um, this is the last New York one. So next yeah. one's going to be a redfish or something weird. We'll see. Well, it'll be a lot of fun. I, I'm, I, I'm going to try to make it down there for that one. Definitely the red fish. Godspeed, Eli. Thanks, guys.